And today, where are we, honey? Uh, Headingham Castle. Headingham Castle, castle. which is a real castle for a yes. change. Yes. Okay, and we're going for a little walk around the grounds, and then we're going to go into the castle. Which we wanted to see for some time. Well, I wanted to see for some time now. And now we're here today? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Headingham is uh, Headingham in Essex. And if you look from here, you can see the mound upon which the castle was built as a, as a teaser. Look at that. And there she is, Headingham Castle, built right on top of that mound. It's massive, isn't it? There used to be a retaining wall, curtain wall, all the way around, but that disappeared many, many moons ago and there's a Georgian country house they built on the estate which we'll probably pass as we walk through but it give you an idea of what a wonderful site this is yeah it, it was built in the 1100 1100 yeah it really is a beautiful place it's got uh, a lovely pond down there really nice attractive gardens let's wander down here we're just going to wander around the grounds Try and give you an idea of what a lovely place this really is. There's a couple of really old Douglas fir trees. Um, they are massive. And uh, here is the, a pond, which looks fairly modern. Look at the mini replica of the castle. And we've got a replica castle keep for the ducks. And there is the castle keep duck house. <laughs> and by the feathers, it's still being used. Yeah. That's really cool though, That's isn't cool, it? Yeah. And. Uh, as you can see, the water is fed through from here and flows directly into the pond below, as you can see here. It's a really attractive place, isn't it? Let's have a wander over to the others, follow it around. You kind of get the impression when you walk around here that the, the pond that we're looking at may have been one of the defensive systems in place, something like a moat. Because it seems to run like a river, and of course I know it isn't, because at the end of that is a very steep hill. Um, there is absolutely no way that this could have supported itself naturally. And as you can see here, it goes on and on. And it's like this is like a moat, isn't it? It is like a moat, yeah. Yeah. So I'm wondering if this was actually built as a defensive system for the castle. And of course the grounds extend beyond this uh, pond across to the other side of the embankment. It's beautiful here, isn't it? Very nice, yes. I came here a few times as a policeman to go into the alarms when the alarm was triggered in the house. It's a lovely, it's a lovely property here. Can you imagine inheriting this. Hmm. Yeah. But this is all privately owned. It's got nothing to do with English heritage, including the park, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Or the National Trust. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're walking up along this trackway towards the house and the bridge, which takes us into the. Castle Keep. Isn't that magnificent?
And this is the house. It's a nice lovely. garden, isn't it? Yes, it's a lovely one. Okay, we're heading up towards the keep. Yeah, this would have been once part of the moat. Look at this. Wow. It's impressive. So that would have been surrounded by water. Steps as well. Yeah. And you can see here the, the moat wall. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. And here she is. 900 years. A story 900 years in the making. <laughs> On the toilets are hidden in the undergrowth, look. Yeah. <laughs> look at this. Talk about discreet toiletries. You've really got to see this sign. Um, and here they are, the hidden toilet block. Oh yeah. Are the same ones that went to Crescent Temple while I was visiting one day. They were at the Crescent Temple. Should we go and see the hawk before yeah, we go in? Yeah. You like hawks, don't you? Yeah, well, I love a lot It's a bit scary. They, they did pass me that time when I was at Crescent that day. It looks quite scary, actually. <laughs> Look at that, it's Look fantastic. Years ago, the Cubs and Scouts used to meet there. Yeah? Yeah, in the, in the castle tower. Looks like an owl. It does. It does. I, I know what it is. I've been here. Yeah. We're at six pounds. Guys. Oh, is it? Oh, sorry. Okay. There wasn't any sign. I do apologise. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, now we're going up to the keep of the castle, up this magnificent stone staircase. And we're going to wander up and see what we can find. And this is a wondrous view of the grounds. I love the word wondrous, <laughs> I always say that, but it is wondrous. And here is the entrance. I'll stand back so you can appreciate it. Okay. And the pattern, I just noticed, that's the dog's teeth. The yeah. pattern on top of the door. Or crenellated is the yeah. word they yeah. use. Yeah. You're right. Isn't she clever? Right, we're going to go up the stone staircase. These bricks actually are like an engineering brick, and I know the history. These were manufactured in the 19th century at a place called Stamble in Essex. They're like heavy engineering bricks. And now we're going up the stairs. And this is the baronial hall. We came in at the forekeep, I suppose they call that area, on the ground floor. This would have been where they would have entertained, discussed battles and 
all kinds of escapades. Look at this fireplace. As you can see, it has the dog tooth pattern, or it's crenellated, whichever way you want to uh, interpret it. In fact, all the arches are crenellated. They all have that dog tooth pattern as you wander around. And internally too, as you can see, and if we follow it around, You've got another window there, which is closed. I thought um, one of these should be open. No, they're all locked. I understand Queen Matilda died here, the wife of King Stephen. Yes, she died here on 3rd of May, 1152. And do you know what she died from? Uh, no, I, I, I did search. I'm sure the information is there, but... But what's she famous for, though? For um, being a supportive of the Knights Templars and building Crescent Temple. Yeah, she founded the Order at Crescent yeah, Temple. Yeah, which is close to us. Yeah, we which was subject of one of our previous yeah, visits. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and I she died it, here, bless yeah, her. Yeah, I know. So we have a queen who died here. Queen who it's died here, yeah. yeah. A Norman queen. Yeah. And she would have enjoyed this hall because the interesting factoid attached to this castle keep, it is the best Norman best keep, preserved best preserved Norman, Norman keep in England. Yep. Yep. And what a wonderful building it is. So we're looking for something which is close to being original. This keep is probably it. Up there is the minstrels gallery. And we will start our wander around almost by magic from this moment. Okay, so now we've got an overview of the Great Hall from the, uh, the, walk the walkways. How about this? This is Norman England at its best. And look at here, from here. What a wonderful view of the house. Certainly worth coming here today, I have to say. There is a basement, um, we'll see if we can get into that or cellar. But this gives you some wondrous views, doesn't it? And look at the view from here. There's loads of bugs outside the window. But this looks over the village of Castle Headingham. Whoops, as I tap the glass. Big heavy oak beams. What do you think of this place? It is just it's breathtaking. I think when you're here in person, I hope it shows on camera how interesting it is. It is very, very because interesting. Definitely in person, it's just really breathtaking. Have you seen all the beams yeah, from Yeah, I took a view from there. And I, like always what surprises me is how warm it is inside. Well, it's the summer, but yeah. But you, you still don't expect it, even in summer, no. you don't expect, you expect it. You expect it to be a bit cooler, don't yeah, you? Yeah, because in our house, it's cooler than yeah, here. In, and yeah. yet this has, what, two meter thick walls? So, <laughs> it's very nice. And that's as far as we're allowed to go up, I'm afraid. Uh, 
we can go on other stuff. On the other way. Yeah, we can't go up. Yes, we can. Yeah, this is the escape room only. Where we came from, there was another entrance like that. We don't have the portal. Okay, well, let's go down here. Was it? Oh, this is the minstrels gallery. This is where we started. Yeah, this is where we started. So this is the the minstrels gallery, which we which we've already circumnavigated. I just missed the tiling. Well, no, you've picked I up. Oh, look at before I go. Let me just show. Look at the look at the artwork in this archway. Medieval carving in detail. Isn't this beautiful? I mean, how cool is this place? Look at this graffiti. Oh, and there's loads more graffiti. 1707. Oh yeah, seventeen oh seven. Some. Something. And there's one here, 1709. So I'm guessing that in the 18th century, people could come here and do whatever they liked. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, let's go downstairs. And staircases were designed anti-clockwise, so that the knight could easily withdraw his sword and defend himself if. Uh, Invaders came rushing up the staircase. These bricks we're walking on are much later and cannot be the originals. This is Baronial Hall. That would do. Yeah, but we can't get in there, can we? No. But look at the stonework here, it's just incredible, isn't it? Okay, let's go downstairs. The rest of it we can, we've already covered. And there's, of course, one question. Who actually built the castle keep? Uh, De Vere. It was the De Vere family. The De Vere family, yes. Next door we have, this is Castle Headingham, we have Sybil Headingham, mm. and Sybil was wife of one of the De Vere's, okay. and her name was Sybil De Vere. Really? And it's Sybil's <laughs> Headingham, wow. so it became Sybil Headingham. That's interesting. <laughs> that, is interesting. that was her estate, she yeah, owned that. Yeah. And this building here, before we go, is the entrance hall, which has an amazingly fantastic stone archway spanning the entire length of the tower at this level. And again, another fantastic fireplace. Oh, you got the guide. Yes. <laughs> I wonder where she went to. We made it into a tradition to buy a guide every time we travel somewhere. Okay, where should we go now? We're going downstairs. Just one quick sweeping view of the top. It is amazing, isn't it? We look outside, the castle was actually built 
as you can see from here here's the keep it's actually built on a huge ramp which I showed the outside of on the way in now we're looking over the edge of this ramp and think that this was dug and created by hand by peasant labor and soldiers in the 1100s I'm just trying to extend the camera this is a very very steep embankment What a beautiful building, isn't it? Let's just wander around the outside. That would do the circle, I think. So this is the actually the best preserved Norman keep in England and uh, it's quite an interesting structure isn't it and look at the sweeping view of the side of the keep and it's cooler out there I have to say it's very hot in here I didn't think there was anything else. It's just tricking me all the time because there's so many That's a, a openings. Yeah. Okay. And that takes you out again. And this takes us back outside again. We wander around the other side, try and give you a view. of the castle which is towards the entrance and there you have it you've had a, a full tour of the outside and the inside of the building as far as we're allowed to go there is on the upper floor an escape room which uh, currently you were not allowed to enter of course that would lead to the roof but what a wonderful building So if you ever get the opportunity to visit Castle Headingham in Essex, this is very much the place to come to. Yes. But Wana comes extra as the guide. <laughs> Just go back and have a look at the steep bank, the castle mound look how steep this embankment is and there she sits atop the hill this is a beautiful place isn't it it really is a nice place Such to come it I is isn't it yeah I can't ever say enough about this part of the country 
It's absolutely stunning everywhere you go. East Anglia. It, it's as if it's a pearl necklace. It's so many, <laughs> so many pieces of, of just beautiful places, treasures everywhere, scattered. And look at the Ganra, the Ganra Manicata. This is what we have in our pond. <laughs> so we have another view of the pond. It's so beautiful. You could sit here for hours, couldn't you? Yes, you could. This is a real picnic place, isn't it? Absolutely. We must someday, one day to Well, our, our variation is, is different because it doesn't produce these flower heads. No, but the, the, the leaf is very similar. Yeah, it's very similar, yeah. It's a member of the same family. These are actually rhubarbs. This is a gunnera, but it's not the same gunnera as our gunnera. They are massive. It's like you stand next to one of the plants just to give people an idea of how huge it <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah. That is big, isn't it? Yes. And the leaves are deadly poisonous. <laughs> No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. I oh, know. Rub I'm, against the leaves, honey. <laughs> I'm just being, I'm just yeah, being rub cruel. Rub against the plant. But look at these flower pods. They look like alien plant growth. You can imagine these things coming out in a horror film, couldn't you? Yeah, like an alien. Like Prometheus or something. Oh, Prometheus. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Oh, look at that. We have a family of ducks, oh, ducklings. Look at that. Yeah, we, we won't be able to get any closer though. Don't mind the babies. I'm not going to go anywhere near them. Oh, look at that. Once they're in the water, I'll see if they come closer. Let's walk down here. You see here. how they're rushing? I know. That, well, she's, I mean, she's doing the right thing, isn't she? Yeah, of course. She doesn't trust people, so... Oh, look at that. She's got a troop of, oh, what, six? So she's got six babies. Six or seven? No, there's seven. Seven. Oh, seven babies, yeah. Jesus. And look at this beautiful lake. I know. So this, at one point, would have been part of the moat, I think. I'm, I'm very sure of that as well. Yeah. I mean, it's a huge engineering project, yeah, yeah. which the De Vere's created here. And you still got, you're standing in this beautiful garden, and yet you've still got that beautiful castle tower. Yeah. And that's where we got confused, didn't we, with the house? Yeah, this we, is the we, other side of the, the same other house. Side, yes. Yeah. Look at the size of that leaf. Well, anyway, f <laughs> we could go on here forever and ever. What we're planning to do, should we have a wander around Castle Headingham? Just yes. show them yeah, by the church. Nice, yes. We're going to have a wander down to Castle Headingham, the actual village, which is very close to where we are. I'm not sure how much power we've got left on this camera, but we'll do a walk around there, which we'll incorporate in this tour. And... Uh, it is a wonderful part of England to get to. If you ever get the opportunity, do travel up to North Essex, and, and in particular, East Anglia as a whole, I think. And this part of North Essex is really, really splendid and spectacular. And it's quite the contrast from the southern part of Essex, which is much mostly built up and industrial. Yeah. So this is a really wonderful place to be. And let's hope it stays that way. Mm. But uh, thank you for joining me, and for Wyna as well, for joining me too. Yes. And do come and visit if yeah. you have a chance. Yeah, it's just been a it's really, really wonderful. Yeah, it's worth oh, so And where are we now? In uh, Castle Headingham. The actual village from the, the castle. Village, yes. yeah. And we're going to wander around the back roads yes. and look at some of the old buildings. Yep. This is the main street, so it's very, very busy here. But uh, we're going to go on the back roads and you can admire the architecture. It's a lot quieter once you get off the main road, isn't it? Lovely little cottage there. These properties are tucked away behind the main road as you pass through Castle Headingham. And Castle Headingham connects between Sybil Headingham and all the way through to Sudbury. So you have a little back road here. 
this is the, I suppose if it had a square, this would be the square here. And if we spin around, this is Castle Lane. And right at the very end at the top, you probably can't see it, is the top of the tower of the castle with a flag flying. And this lovely house here on the right called the Falcon. It looks 17th century, maybe 16th century actually. Yeah, it's 16th century and it has jettying, jettying. So it's overextended at the top. And it has a lot of charm and character to it and you can see the exposed stud work. It's obviously got a great age to it. And the house next door to it used to have jettying but it's been infilled in at the bottom and you can see that with the cresting there and behind me is for intents and purposes is the doctor surgery which is a largely built victorian property and just around the corner is this beautiful detached 18th century house Looking at the structure of it, I would say it's a lot earlier inside. It's a timber frame property that's had a brick front put on. They used to modern, that's how they modernise houses. Oh, they yeah. And you can see the same with the property next door. Oh, look at that rather cute house right at the end. Oh, yeah. The curve. And some of these cottages make such a good use of the space they have in a garden because oh. some of them have absolutely no garden like this one and they still manage to squeeze in two chairs on a table oh and a small garden there yeah yeah, yeah they honestly, make it honestly in a location like this and that's another example of a small garden that they uh, made use of what they had she wanted to pop into the church yes. we're at St Nicholas Church Castle Headingham the town is Tudor uh, I think the I think the church itself is mostly 16th century, but if you look back, and this you know we were in the castle earlier. This I think is 11th century, and it's exactly the same as what we found in the castle. Well, very similar. This uh, crenellated arch or dog's tooth arch. Yeah and uh, this very ancient door this looks like it probably dates from the same period I would say so, yeah. the windows are much later though ah, and look what i found the sundial oh yes and there's a sundial here <laughs> yeah Let's someone's see. someone's put one back in there haven't Let's they see how well it works but it works doesn't it it actually works because it is three o'clock So this is the outside of St Nicholas, and what a lovely cemetery. I mean, how can anyone say cemeteries are nice? But they are, aren't I they? Can. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can. We can, certainly. Them. Let's wander inside and check out the history of this place. And the entrance here, very, very beautiful. You can see where the lantern was, there would have been a space there for a statue at some point. That reminds me of uh, Barney Towers. Uh -huh. It does. It's unusual, we've got like a stoop here, for probably water for the poor. It is unusual, because yeah. they're usually inside. It's the holy water used to be poured into that, and that would have went straight into the earth because it was a sin to throw at any other place, so the church would have had any altar. Uh, where the priest would have washed his hands and emptied the holy water and literally every church has that especially the medieval ones yeah but not on the outside never on the outside i've never seen it on the outside probably for lepers yeah, or something yeah, okay and these doors look quite modernist unfortunately is it locked Oh wow, yeah look at the size of this door. It is massive. And that strap work, that medieval strap work. Isn't that incredible? It is. 
See if you can see it better. Look at this. That is beautiful, isn't it? And this one's around inside. It's very elegant, isn't it? And you've got, with the arcading as well, look. Yes. Look at the ceiling, the wood, the carpet. And the bosses, you can't see on this camera. It has bosses supporting the arches, which supports the roof, which are very ornately carved. And this beautiful screen, look at this. So it's got to be contemporary to the age of the of the church. And this section of the church looks much older, and in fact it is. You can now see it much clearly. You have those padded seats there, which would have been used by the clergy. A wonderful tomb here. I don't know if you can see it, but it shows four maidens at prayer. They look like nuns. I'm not sure if we are allowed in there. Probably not. I'll try and show you from here. It looks like basalt. There's some lettering which uh, initials rather than uh, any, any text. amazing and the side panel apparently is very badly worn but it looks like a family shield of some description and again you've got the dog's teeth patterning on those arches on the seats which would have been used by senior clergy back in the day. And on the roof of this particular tomb, we can show you a little bit more detail here. Hope you, there we go. Absolutely beautiful. spin round very gently. And that large oriel window. So yeah, I mean, essentially this looks to be 11th, 12th century, I'll find out for sure. I don't think it's older, uh, newer or older. Have you found anything of the history? Uh, no, I haven't. I, I just um, found that a famous who, who was born here? Um, his name is at the entrance. He's um, a painter and a herbalist. A herbalist, and, yeah. Um, you, you can see more about him. Will you show me before we go? He, to talk, yeah. he was etching and drawing the natural life of Okay. There's a lovely leaded, uh, leaded window here. Actually, quite a good Victorian one. And here we have a model of the church. I would contend that this is the, the, the original part of the church, and this was added much later, certainly with this um, Tudor tower. But um, you'll see in the comments below 
uh, the exact age of the church and uh, whether I'm right with regard to the chancel end of the church being much older, which I'm pretty sure it is. It appears to have two chapels here. You'll have to show me. I just want to look at this. Look, at this. this is really attractive. Tesserae or mosaic um, of Jesus. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm. And to the glory of God. lovely brass here to a vicar um, James John James Twist vicar of the parish 1895 298 erected by his parishioners and friends it's a lovely little church isn't it a memorial here to a gentleman Vero William Taylor, who died on May the 11th, 1914, aged 81 years. As you leave, you take God's blessings upon you and your home. Go in peace, be strong and of good courage. May the peace of God dwell in your heart. And this is it, really. This is as much as we can share with you here today. But um, it's, it's lovely and cool in here. Very, very cool. And a very, very chilled atmosphere, too. Absolutely massive bell tower, as you can see. And that is Tudor brick. Massive archway. And what one I was talking about was Mark Catesby, a naturalist who lived between 1682 to 1749. His mother was the daughter of Nicholas Jekyll of Sheepcot House. I wonder if their relation to Gertrude Jekyll, who was uh, a landscape gardener. But um, there you have it. And now we will press on with our journey through the village. That there is a plank. Um, this is where uh, the first woman physician of Queen Elizabeth II is buried. Is it on that black basalt and tomb? It is, oh uh, no, it's, it's on the wall, the plaque. So she's buried somewhere here, but the plaque, commemorative plaque, it's on the right side. Did you get a name? And it's Marjorie G. Blackie. Oh yes, she owned Cas Headingham Castle. So, yeah. Mm, she owned Headingham Castle. The castle we've just been to, she okay, actually so owned she it. she owned it. Yeah, okay. she owned it, yeah. yeah. So she was the royal physician. Yeah. Um, she lived there with her partner, and when they both died, it, I believe the estate yeah. was passed to a relative. And the partner is also there as well. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, because Excellent. it says together in the afterlife or something of us. That's very touching. Something on those lines. Should we go for a look yes. at the rest of the village? Well, as much as we can see on this battery. Anyway, thank you very much. God bless. It's such a lovely church, isn't it? It's got it a is. good atmosphere, isn't it? Okay, we're back outside again. In the freshening air. 
it's lovely little houses all the way around the edge of the mm. of the church. So I think we'll wander around those, shall we? Yeah. We didn't find anything relative to the history. Uh, I haven't searched, honestly. What's this here? Look. Look, 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 look. Life in Castle Headingham in the mid 20th century. Some personal memories with thanks to Charles Bird, Monica Nash, and Nellie Plum. Tell you a tale now of my father. Yeah, <laughs> and this is, I only We only learned this since we've been here. We had a cousin um, come and he brought some photographs and showing us. What was his name? Uh, Michael Hillston. And uh, he said, this was before my father married my mother. Yeah. Now, he, his parents died when he was quite young, so his sisters brought him up, mm -hmm. and he, they lived in Bailey Street in those cottages. Well, when the castle caught fire, mm -hmm. um, Mrs. Magindy come down, knocking up the villagers to come and help put the fire out. Now she knocked on my um, aunt, uh, being my auntie's one, my great aunt, my where my father lived. Knocked on the door and said his name was Dyson. Dyson, I want you off the castle. The castle's on fire. And he, he turned around and said, from "Yeah, from the bedroom." Oh, he says, "Let it burn." He says, <laughs> "I'm not coming up because what had happened? He got caught poaching." By yeah. the gamekeeper. Yeah. yeah. And she took him yeah. to court. Did she? Yeah. And he got fined two and sixpence, which was a lot of money then. Yeah. yeah. And he, he wouldn't, um, he wouldn't go up and put out, put the fire out. Crazy. Yeah. And I what thought it was so funny. <laughs> I don't know if he swore anything. I don't know. About Thank that. you. Yeah. Just going back to your little <laughs> That That's marvellous. So what we have here on the bench is a sound archive of people, voices from the past, taken from the Essex County Records Office. That's a lovely story. The talking bench. Yeah, the talking bench. That's lovely. So he wouldn't do anything for the castle, let it burn, because he got caught poaching. <laughs> uh, that's wicked. We have these in the garden. The, uh, what's it called? Do not eat those. No, they're poor. We have them in the garden. Um, what am I called? I can't, I can't, the name, the name oh, I don't know. I can't now. remember either. The forager. In the me. forager. Yeah, she's the forager. Oh, look at this lovely cross. It's for the Second World War. It's like a Celtic cross. Look at the stonework. You can see. I'm not sure. The light is not very good. Look at this. Isn't They're that amazing? On the bench. It's so eerie to hear it coming from the I know, it's like a ghost talk. Still here. Well, you think the person who's talking to us it's is probably gone. buried here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes, all those people from years past, all their memories. But at least some of them have been kept for eternity, hopefully. I think that's a lovely idea. I, I do, think. yeah. Look at this village, look, isn't this beautiful? We need actually to go out the other gate, don't we, to appreciate this. Okay, we're going out the main gate and we're going to walk down the side street so you can admire the uh, small cottages that line the sides of the cemetery. So we have, we've been here before, it's Falcon Square actually is what we're in. So that's Falcon House, was the house we looked at earlier when we came yeah. past. Next door is Kestrel Cottage. <laughs> They're all, all named after birds of prey. Yes. And even the one next to them has a bird's name. Yeah, yep. 
this is a lovely little street church ponds i don't know why they call it church ponds because well there's no ponds here no, no. <laughs> it's obviously a an old saxon word for something else mm -hmm. i don't know so yes it's a beautifully hot day today isn't it Let's hope we don't run out of uh, juice before uh, we finish here today. So, as I say, these properties here, I'll, I'll just put the camera on the side so you can get a view. Um, we'll step out further back. There's a lot of history down here, isn't there? And then in between you've got this, this jetted property here. I mean, you think of all the people that have lived here over the centuries. It's a very noisy jet. These look like old almshouses, these cottages. And across the road, you've got this lovely cottage here, which is next to the churchyard. They're so tiny. They are, they're very small. Mind you, there's not a lot of room here, is there? And it goes around this corner here. So the properties here are much more spread out. This is Crown Street. And then that runs back into the modern world. So what we need to do is turn around and just go back up that way. Oh, this way. Yep. Look at the church tower in the background. Yeah, this is England at its best, isn't it? Just do a view here. And these are all flint properties or flint fronted and then back to brick again lovely view of the tower sorry it's a bit windy again some of them are so small you wouldn't think anybody can live in Essex County Council reconditioned under the provisions of the Housing Rural Workers Act. 1920. Oh right, so these cottages were reconditioned by the Essex County Council in 1920 in lieu of a Workers Act, Rural Workers Act, obviously to give people accommodation. So that is 102 years ago. Yep, 102 years ago. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good period of time away, isn't it? There's the Memorial Hall. And then we go back. We can go, this way, we can go, over the cars. We can go through here, which just takes us back into the churchyard. Oh, we can do the roundabout, yeah. Okay. Castle Headingham Club, established 1952. Never heard of it, actually. And I've lived here. <laughs> I've lived here for many years. Isn't this a beautiful part of England? Yes. Now we're, it feels we're back in the middle of the country again, doesn't it? We've got this little field here. But it is an illusion because we are surrounded by housing. All oh, these beautiful poppies. Look at that. They're such beautiful flowers. Mm -hmm. 
and this is taking us back up into the main street that goes through the village. You enjoying this, aren't you? Very much. Yes. <laughs> Oh, back to the modern world. Loud music. I never understood why some people have to feel the need of showing everybody that tasty music. Yeah, poor tasty music. It's a bit dicey walking through here, I have to add. Probably wasn't back in the day. I'll cross over. Look how out of shape this cottage is. It's a restaurant now, but you can see the way it's, set, way it's settled on its on its foundations, and the the beams have moved. kind of crazy really isn't it but they but they still work that's the thing par getting here I'm not sure how old this par getting is but it appears to show Tudor rose and uh, dolphins or bell house Lovely little shop there, the village shop. <laughs> yeah. And the sun's gone. Really? There's bird down in the window. Yeah, it's just an I empty house. house. Someone lived there and someone has died, but yeah, but it's empty now. Next door to the pub, the Bell Inn. <laughs> Sorry, the Bell Inn. <laughs> I think so, yes. But the entrance to a coaching inn would be here. This would have been the, the entrance. Yeah. We're not far from the car. Oh, motorbikes are back. Oh, thank God for that. Yeah. I was beginning to miss all I that know. loud noise. What do you want to do? Either side. Can we go for a drink? Yes. Okay, oh the wind's bad. Okay, we're going off camera for a very short while while we have a drink at the Bell Inn. Well, here we are again, just left the pub. The pub apparently dates from the 14th century, believe it or not. I'll step across the road. You can see it in this light. Yeah, when I was talking to the owner, date, the actual pub dates from the 14th century, and in many years past it was a coaching inn. So it's quite a lot of history there, isn't there? And now we're coming to the end of our journey. It's very, very windy, so I do apologize. And here we have another blue plaque to Eric Ravidius, artist and designer, 1903 to 1942. And I do actually recall this artist, <laughs> which unlike, sadly, some of the plaques that we've discovered on other properties, I haven't, I haven't actually got any history of these people to my knowledge, but Eric Ravidius is somebody who does come to mind. I love looking at some of these old houses, it's like for this one for example. You can see on the right it was jetted and then it was pushed out at some point in history and infield to increase the amount of space in the property and as we saw 
earlier today what looked like a Georgian fronted building was probably the same period as this but in later years they modernized them by adding a brick front so sometimes when you look at a property it could be much earlier than what it appears on the surface And here comes Wana, she's uh, been in the pub. <laughs> Kiwi! <laughs> Whoops, I've upset a dog. And where have you been? It's an eclectic mix of, of different ages in that toilet. <laughs> I know, I noticed that. It's like 1920, it's like Poirot meets... Uh, uh, many of you may have wondered what happened to the old telephone boxes, you know, with the, the age of the internet and mobile yeah. telephones. Well, many of them have been converted into defibrillator stations. So instead of having a payphone, you have a defibrillator. And there it is. Which I believe in too. The only problem you've got, of course, is to make sure that people, that there are people around who can operate them. But it's, it's wonderful the fact that it's there, isn't it? And of course the uh, the post box is still very much with us. There is a call, but the call is faded, so I'm thinking if there is an emergency, by the time you try and figure out those letters, you're just supposed to press, you see? Oh yes, see? yeah. Was well, that not brow? You can see the code there, C1267. Oh, because there's more, oh, okay, yeah, that's, that's in brow. Oh, yeah, 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 postcode, yeah. in brow. There you go. It still says telephone at the back, look, and the sides. Oh no, it's just covered over. If you look inside, you can actually see the original telephone plaques. Anyway, I think we've mumbled on for far too long now. So we're going to call it a day for yeah. today. And thank you very much for joining us on this wander around Castle Headingham, the actual castle and the village that's attached to it. Mm. And until the next time, I will speak to you then. Until then, thank you, take care and goodbye.